All right, so we're going to round out our conversation on resonance with a few comments that are very, I think, abstract. So hold on to your hats. We're going to talk about resonance in the context of delocalized and localized loan pairs, okay? So as you might imagine, delocalized loan pairs, we've used that term a couple times in the past few conversations. Delocalized means they're not stuck in one place, right? And localized means that they are, okay? So localized electrons are not in resonance and delocalized do participate in resonance and are consequently more stable and energetically favorable, right? So we really care about this. This is going to help us evaluate uh, stability and what, what systems are lower in energy and essentially what's going to happen. So, and you'll be able to recognize uh, what is a delocalized and a localized um, pair of electrons, but it's going to take some, some, uh, some thought, all right? So, first of all, to be delocalized, a lone pair of electrons has to be adjacent to an atom with an unhybridized p orbital. Whoops, whoa, whoa, let's go back. Has to be uh, adjacent to an atom with an unhybridized p orbital, okay? So, here I've got a pair of, let me get my marker out here. We're talking about delocalized now, right? Okay, so here I've got a pair of electrons, right? A lone pair of electrons. And can you see that right next to it is an sp2 hybridized? Let me write that down so you can see that. Let me go orange. This carbon is sp2 hybridized, which means it has an unhybridized p orbital there, right? So since it has an unhybridized p orbital, then these electrons can go into it they can go here. You've seen this in, in previous conversations. We've done this before. And these guys can go up here, okay? So to be delocalized, a lone pair has to be next to an unhybridized p orbital. All right? So let's go um, and look at a specific example. In one structure, the nitrogen is sp3 hybridized, and the other indicates the sp2, the nitrogen is sp2 hybridized. Which is it? Look at this. So we saw this in the, in the previous slide. These go down here, and this goes here. So tell me, if this is delocalized, right? Can you see this is sp2 here? And this looks like it's sp3, right? OK, this is very subtle. Now, if it participates in resonance, then it's going to be sp2 hybridized. All right, so let me say that um, let me say that again because it's abstract and it's going to be it's going to be valuable to remember. So let's suppose that some let's suppose that some electronegative element is either N, O, or F, okay? And we have so and then we have a that so one of these three, right? And it's got a lone pair here. If it has a lone pair. And I won't, you know, we won't say if it has another bond or not because I haven't said if it's nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, okay? If it has a lone pair, then that means that this is sp2 hybridized. Yes, 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 okay? That, I think, is easy to get sideways on. All right, so in order for a lone pair to be delocalized, it has to be next to an atom with a, an unhybridized p orbital available, okay? So let's look at a picture of that. You can see, uh, actually, no, I don't have a picture of that. Sorry about that. What I want to show now here is when is that not true? Okay. When is it not true? Because look here. If you show um, these, where am I here? Look at these. There's a pair of, there's a pair of electrons that's next to a, right? That's a lilic to a double bond. You see that? So you're going to be tempted to go, well, that must be sp, well, it is sp2, but you might be tempted to go, well, those electrons can go down in there, right? But they can't go down in there. Why not? They can't go down in there because that lone pair, don't forget that this shape is trigonal planar, right? And so that lone pair of electrons actually in the plane, and it cannot get parallel, it cannot get in line with these other unhybridized p orbitals, Okay. So it's perpendicular, right? It's orthogonal to those other unhybridized pupils, and they can it cannot get overlapped with those other unhybridized pupils. This that makes it stuck. So watch out for this. Super easy 
to get sideways and you start throwing electrons around, but you can't forget where those electrons are. All right, so don't assume that a lone pair is delocalized just because it's close to a, po a pi bond. As a general rule, you can assume that when an atom possesses a pi bond in a lone pair, they will not both participate in resonance. And as always, if there's no p orbital next to the lone pair, then it will not be delocalized. It will be localized, okay? So let's just walk through this structure down here and we'll be done with this chapter. So can you see that this lone pair does not have an unhybridized p orbital anywhere close? There's none, there's not one here, not one here, and not one here. So it's localized, right? What about this lone pair of electrons? Right? So that hydrogen is out in the plane and this is allylic to that one. Oops, I don't want that arrow. That's curved arrow, right? If we're going to use curved arrows, let's use them right. This could go here and this could go here. Yes, that is true. Okay, so this, is, this pair is going to be delocalized. And also watch out, the lone pair wasn't even drawn in there, right? So you have to know that they're there. Well, I promised you at the beginning of this series of conversations that if you got used to shapes and formal charges and structures and lone pairs, then you would be set. You'd be ready to understand this stuff deeply. So go practice those things. Good luck.